Hey, I hope you're well. In this week's video, we're going to be looking at pulling in high seedings in a basic composition using a tilt shift lens. And we're continuing on from the palace in Lazio that we were in last week. It's uh, coming towards the conclusion of this series. So stay tuned, but let's dive into the video. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK, and I love shooting abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems, and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. I'm posting new videos every Sunday, so why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing. You can also check out my website in the description below. Back in a disused palace in the heart of Italy, I'm in this red room and it's got beautiful high ceilings and we're trying to photograph them. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna do that with tilt shift lens. We're gonna incorporate more of the ceiling, less of the foreground, and just give you a very, very basic understanding of how that operates. Okay, so these lenses have a larger image circle than a traditional lens. What does that mean? Well, it means that if your camera's on the tripod and your sensor's flush to the back wall of the building as it is here in the camera position, so in other words, horizontal mode on the tripod, sensors flush to the back wall of the building. What we can do is we can use the shift function of this lens to incorporate, push it upwards, use some of that large image circle to portray a lot, an image from higher up in the framing onto our center of our camera. We can also go down, shift the lens down, 45 degrees within and left and right as well. So anything from that large image circle can be projected onto the sensor. It's ideal for architecture photography because that means that we can incorporate them, these large ceilings into our framing. We can also get creative and start doing panoramic work, start incorporating large parts of our scene to blend it together. There's lots we can do with these lenses, they're quite creative. So I own two of these lenses, the 24 and the 17 mil. Um, the big differences between these, first of all, is of course they're manual focus compared to my wide angle, which is of course autofocus and, and brilliant at it. These you have to all do manually, but they've also got all of these additional knobs and bumps and buttons all over the side. The 24mm, the one I'm holding in my hand here, is a cheaper version. Uh, you can get the Mark I version of this. You can also get the uh, off-brand versions of this one as well. This is probably the place to start if I was you looking to purchase one of these for the first time. Or if you're in places like the UK, Germany, hiring one of these is probably the better option. Uh, it gives you uh, much more kind of like control over your budget and uh, use them for a specific job and then not necessarily have them in your kit all the time. But for me personally, I love having these in my kit. They give me more reach, they incorporate more ceilings into my framing, and that's what we're gonna be looking at right here. And we're gonna start right here with the room just over my shoulder, the red room behind me with a very high ceiling. Let's do it. The first thing to mention here is that I do use the R5 with one of the Canon adapters for the tilt shift lenses. 
You can find other adapters for your camera between these lenses as well and other brands. And the only thing to bear in mind when you do this is of course it is a little bit extended and does add a little bit extra weight towards the front. So you do need to make sure that you've got a very good solid tripod head so that it's not going to go anywhere and pull the camera forwards. Okay, so I've put the tilt shift on the camera with the adapter as you saw and we're kind of good to go. We've talked about things already in this, like exposure bracketing, the two second timer. None of this is gonna change. We need to use all of these tips and tricks we've already done. The only difference is here, we're gonna be manually focusing and we're gonna be slightly shifting the lens up to incorporate more of the ceiling. That is literally all we're gonna be doing that's different. So first of all, I've positioned my camera on the tripod, got the center column up a little bit here. 17 mil is the lens that I've chosen. So I've got the fireplace in, I've got the walls, and I've got not very much of the ceiling in my initial framing. What I'm gonna to look to do is I'm gonna unlock the lens, which is here on the barrel. I'm gonna shift the lens to more to the top. So you can actually shift it down like this, and you can also shift it up. I'm gonna shift it up, and I'm gonna incorporate more of the ceiling into my framing. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing here. And when I do this, um, I can do it to a point where actually it looks really nice because I can incorporate the ceiling. There's a diamond just above me and I can incorporate it. So just at the top of my framing, there is a lovely little bit of ceiling mold that's actually gonna, then gonna be included in my frame. Much more pleasing composition. We're not overstretching it. We're not going too high on the tilt shift lens. We're just going to a, a sensible part. And already we've made the composition completely uh, look really nice, a lot nicer. We've cleaned it up, it looks really good, and we're gonna shoot that. So no different really, we're gonna be using three brackets. Okay, so I've settled on a stop and two thirds apart. That's what I've settled on. What we need to do is check our focus because it's manually, like I said. And we need to ensure that we're shooting ISO 100, nice and low. We need to incorporate our ceiling, like I've already mentioned. I've lifted my camera, my lens up, but I've now got more ceiling in. But what I've not done is check the focus. And there's going to be some parts of this we need to be careful with. We want to make sure that the ceiling above is in focus and the walls on the side. So we need to check around our frame and make sure that they're all correct. What we do is we press the little magnifying glass key just here. It then enables us to zoom in on the screen. Then we can fine tune this composition by manually focusing at the front here. We just literally use the front element of the lens to manually focus. We then press the magnifying glass to back out. If your camera has focus peaking, I highly recommend putting it on because what that does is enables us to highlight uh, actually what we're looking at. It can actually show us um, you know, what, what is in focus and what's not. In this camera, you'll see this on the purple or pink menu, the AF, under number two. You'll see number two here. You've got manual focus, peaking settings. Peaking, I've turned it on. Level is high and I've got my color as red, but you could use any color. I think red is not so good for this room, but it is generally. Uh, and high is because it's showing everything so here, what's happening is, the difference is, if I look at it on and off, let's turn it on for off for a second, you've got no highlights, look, you've got no red. If I turn it back on, we then got here, we've got, it's showing us what's in focus. You can see there, it's highlighting the areas of focus in red. So if I change that color, just so you can get a better understanding, maybe we do it as blue. It's now put everything blue. You can see what's in focus. That really helps with a manual focus kind of lens. So that's something to bear in mind. I'm then gonna move my frame, I'm gonna move my position. It says it's in focus. If we move this now, I can zoom back in at the bottom here and just check and it should still be in focus and it is, that means we're perfect. At this aperture, which is F8. It's the same as a wide angle really. I'm choosing F8 because it's the sharpest part, the sharpest aperture for this lens. If I want to increase my depth of field, we can look at doing that in different ways, but I'm not gonna do that for this lens. I'm happy with F8. Everything in here is gonna be in focus and it's gonna be good. Two second timers on. 
I've pressed the shoot button and we're kind of good to go. A little bit more on the orange side than red, probably because of my editing in post. And I mentioned at the end a little bit something to do with the window as well, which we'll, we'll talk about. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. We've incorporated more of that ceiling. Once I finished here, I actually left the building altogether, uh, located in the town centre. I actually walked through, there's a beautiful light coming in, and made the decision to get up the following morning, as you see here, photograph from my hotel window, bright and early. This is the result. So I hope you like that video, and in fact, I hope you like that double header, two weeks in a row, same place. Beautiful place, uh, like I said, um, I quite like the shots we got in that, you know, it, considering I was trying to concentrate on video, that's basically what we were trying to do. Uh, I went there for over the four mornings, uh, and went back again a couple of weeks later to finish up as well. Uh, my images took a bit of a back seat, but you know, we're trying to do things basic and just trying to keep it so that you guys understand what it is we're trying to shoot. One thing I did do, which I've not mentioned here, is in post-processing, I noticed there was an awful lot of flare coming in on the right-hand side near the window. I'll pop it on the screen now. I did have to do a little bit of filters uh, graduated masks to try to eliminate some of that glare and to make it look a little bit pleasing overall. So just a little bit of word of caution there. Flare is a topic that we'll cover another time, but for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments, please leave them below. And I'll see you next week when we're going to be finishing off the series with ceilings. Stick around, hit subscribe, bell notification, you'll be alerted when that video goes live. Have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy.